Making an art tutorial can be super stressful. Uh, there's so many elements that we're not trained with, like video, sound, um, the lighting, set up, setting everything up. But I have found that it can be a really life-changing way to teach. Um, it's working smarter, not harder. And our students today, they're used to a digital world. And so connecting with them on YouTube or in a digital platform is just a great way to make connections with your students. It's really scary because you're putting yourself out there. How you look, how you sound, um, and your skill, whatever it is you're teaching, you have an active audience and if you make a mistake, it's out there forever. The good part though, is that you can really control exactly how you teach and what you teach so your students get the same instructions every time. It's also a great way to connect with people outside of your classroom. We're experts in our field. We've been trained to do this. It's something we're passionate about. And sometimes as art teachers, we're stuck in the same building. Um, and I found this just to be a really great creative outlet. Um, and I can just focus my creativity on what I'm making in class. I just use my iPhone and iMovie to create my tutorials for my students. Usually I do this at school and I have fluorescent lighting and although natural lighting is better, the fluorescent lights coming from the ceiling do provide um, equal lighting in the room. Um, if you're doing this at home, you want to look for an area that has a lot of natural light. I have a window here and I have my patio doors here. So I'm sitting kind of in my sunroom. Um, I do also have um, some lights that I've added that I'll show you later to kind of create if I'm drawing in this space um, to give the drawing itself better light. But if you're gonna be adding extra lights to it, you wanna make sure that you're not creating cast shadow. So I always recommend doing your videos, doing like a test segment first to test like how is the light um, and how is there gonna be a cast shadow. A tripod is a must. You want a balanced surface that isn't gonna shake and vibrate. Some of my biggest pet peeves watching art tutorials is when the camera is moving. And I have filmed entire tutorials and then deleted them and done them again because the tripod was touching the table or I was rolling clay and the whole table was shaking. Um, so I'm gonna show you my squid tripod and that I can attach to anything. At school, I use my document camera and I just attach my iPhone to that. But when I'm outside painting in plain air and I'm taking video or I'm doing it at home, I use my squid tripod and I attach it to whatever surface I'm using. Um, I have another tripod that I attach the squid tripod to um, and I think it's important that your tripod isn't touching the actual table that you're gonna be creating your artwork on. So if you're like going to town with your colored pencils and the table is shaking and your camera is sitting on the same surface, it's gonna be very difficult for you to get quality video. So I always recommend having your camera on a surface that's not the one you're actually working on to prevent those shaky videos. This is my Zenvo squid tripod. I love it because you can put your phone in here and you can use this to wrap around any surface. So this is my at home setup. So I'm at my table, I have my long traditional tripod, my squid tripod over that. You can see I've added some extra lighting. Um, I have my Chromebook so I can listen to my favorite podcast. So here I am adding my camera over um, so you can see my clay piece and as you can see, I have broken the cardinal rule of making videos. My camera is vertical instead of horizontal. So you see how the image is smaller. So make sure when you're taking your tutorials, you turn your phone horizontally and I'll show you how to flip it in iMovie. Once you're in iMovie and you're selecting the video you want to add, it is gonna show up facing the wrong way and that's super stressful. It took me a long time to figure this out, but if you double tap on the clip and then use your fingers, you twist it on the screen itself. So you can't actually see me using my fingers to do that, but you can see the clip turning. And so in order for it to fill your space horizontally, you're gonna film it that way, but it shows up at the wrong way in iMovie. It took me several tutorials to figure out that easy fix. And I also zoom in and you pinch, so you're taking your two fingers and you're pulling your screen, pinching it to zoom, so that you can edit out anything you don't wanna see, like my leg in workout clothes also makes a pretty nice selfie stick as well. So this was like 20 bucks or less. My brother got it for me for Christmas and it's been a life changer because I can just use it any setting um, because the legs are so twisty. You can just use it on whatever surface that works for you for however you're shooting your videos. Recording your video is just half of the work. Editing takes a lot of time and practice. I prefer to use iMovie because I have an iPhone and I have found it to be pretty user-friendly. My best advice is to just download the app, 
open a video, it doesn't have to be of an art tutorial, and just play around with the features. Open the app and click on movie, and then you're gonna choose your media, which for us will be video. Select the video or videos that you want to include and you can tap them and then they will load in your project folder. Once you've done that, you have to kind of go, it's at the end, so you go all the way back to the beginning of your movie, um, and then you start editing. The first thing I always do is I speed it up twice the regular speed. I can always go back and make it faster or slower. To cut a clip, you just click on the part that you want to disappear and you press the scissors button and you split it, you split it where you want it to end, and then you just delete the clip right out. So that's a great way to just shoot your videos and then edit it to the parts that are really important. Adding music I think is super important and I've imported songs from YouTube iMovie has some songs that you can use, but I like to pick ones that are a little bit different, so I'm not using the same songs that everyone else is using. You can add your track, and it will go all the way through your video, which is great, because if you try to add it in YouTube, it's only as long as the song actually is. VoiceOver is what I use to add um, audio to my video so that I'm not doing it live. Um, with voiceover, I just do that in iMovie and I just use my iPhone. I don't have a special microphone, which might be something I would invest in now that we're doing digital learning. And I feel like I might be doing more of these type of videos where you're actually seeing me and not just hearing me because I miss my students and I'd love for them to be able to interact with me um, as much as they can in this weird time. To add a voiceover, you click the plus sign because this is gonna be in your main menu. Click on voiceover and then there's going to be a recording sign that appears and it tells you when you're ready, gives you a little scary countdown, and then you can record yourself as many times as it takes. I've already recorded this three times, so mistakes happen. You can retake it, you can press accept, and you can do it over and over again until you get it perfect. You wanna make sure the room that you're in doesn't have an echo, and I'm doing this in my living room without a microphone, which isn't perfect, but it's what this public school teacher can work with. Once I'm done editing, I always go all the way back to the end and I like to fade my music out so that there's not an abrupt ending to my music. I also add a end screen, it has my website on it and I usually add my thumbnail at the beginning. So you do this by adding the plus sign and you can add it like a photograph. Once you're finished editing, title your tutorial, and I find it easiest to save it directly to my device. You can upload it directly to YouTube or Instagram or wherever you're posting, but I think it's easier to have it on your device, and it takes a long time depending on how big your file is. I always make sure I save it at the highest quality that I can because I'm gonna be sharing it a lot. To make my thumbnails, I use Canva and Photoshop Express. And Canva is great because you can make a template, like all of my thumbnails look the same and all I do is I change like the photograph of the artwork and the title. And then that way, if like, you're looking up my videos in a YouTube search, you can see my thumbnail and it's always consistent and always the same. It's also important in the classroom if you're showing your students a tutorial, it kind of gives them a synopsis of what materials they're gonna use, what the final product looks like. Um, and I found my students do really enjoy like seeing me for a long time, I didn't do voiceovers. I didn't put my picture because it's nerve wracking to put yourself out there. But I found that my students really like that personal contact and it kind of sets me apart too in a YouTube search. If it's someone who's not my actual student, they can see who I am and that personal connection makes a difference with your tutorials. My best advice is to practice, do lots of takes and don't be scared to post your stuff. We're not experts in making videos, but we are experts in making art. So if you're making videos about projects that you're passionate about and things that you're excited about, that's gonna to translate to your students. And that's also gonna to translate to the world. Making tutorials of your artwork is really important in this digital teaching phase that we're in, but I also found it was life-changing to make a video that I might show 10 times in the course of a week. And instead of me having to sit down and say, okay kids, this is how you do this, I could use it as a review, as a refresher. If a kid um, is suspended or a kid is out sick, you can have them look at the videos that you make to catch up on anything that they miss. It's also great, um, I've had students watch tutorials at home. They've had their little brothers and sisters do it. And it's just a great way to extend your classroom outside just the four walls that you have. 
Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe. I upload my videos weekly unless I'm in a quarantine and I drink a lot of coffee. Check out my website, thatartteacher.com for detailed lesson plans and long form blog posts about what I'm doing in my actual classroom.